I'm not doing anything different. I'm telling the same story. I'm using the same diagram. I'm putting the same things in and I'm doing a different type of problem. And it's quite, it leads to quite an important... If you keep using this technique, it allows us to solve lots of problems using just the same method without having to think too hard what's the technique for solving this question. Okay, still no Zainab, okay. Well, who put the chat in? Oh, you showed me on your trophies, David. All right. I did tell you all before, David signed up to transom.org as a free account. And it keeps track of all the things that he does online for me. So it, when he gets a trophy, I can go and look, have a look and just see a summary of what he's done. And that, that really is useful. Okay, so I've got, I'm going to do three questions. I can't remember where the third one went to. Where's my set of questions? But let's go through the first method, uh, thing. I'm doing the same thing. I'm doing start, change, and end. The top line is always percentage. So what always goes in the top left-hand corner? Type it in. What's always my start percentage? Yep, thank you, Margarita. We always start with 100%. Doesn't matter what the problem is. My next step is I would like to analyse the problem. So find the percentage increase if 100, maybe I should have done a different question. So we've got some quantity at the bottom, which is 100, increases to 115 on the end. I'll put another question in a minute. So my end quantity is 115. Now I can come in and fill in my question. What was the change here? The change was I've done 15 but added it. That's the bit I can think about. Now you don't need to create the change but find the percentage increase. Well this is the number I want to work. What's the change as a percentage? And you can say x over the percentage is the quantity. And my quantity for change is 15 over my start amount, the 100. So that was the start at the bottom, and that's the change at the top. Why is it 15? Why is it what? 15. Because they, they've told us we've increased a quantity from 100 to 115. And when you look at some of these things, if you want to compare um, different sizes of populations, say you've got a fairly large town and next to it is a fairly small town. If you start at one time and you're told this lot have 10,000 people in it and this one has uh, 2,500, if this one goes up to 12,000 people over a period, and this one goes up to 3,000, it's hard to compare which one's growing a bit quicker. But if you turn... Actually, I'll do this as a problem. Let's do this one as a problem. If you've asked that question, let's use that as a problem. And why is it a benefit to see it as a percentage? So let's do the large town. So the large town... Let's do it in black. So the large town grows from 10,000 people to 12,000 people. And we're going to calculate that as a percentage. So we'll do that quickly now. What's the percentage for this one? We've got a start, a change, an end, a percentage, and we've got a number of people. Now, it's not fair to compare the 500 increase here to the 2,000 increase here. Uh, so, because that's not, f because they're different size populations. But if we think that they're growing, and they might be growing at different rates, I might need to put more services into one town or the other. So the way to compare them is using proportion. 
that the easiest proportion to use is to use a percentage. So different si when you see things of different size, to compare different sizes, increases for different size companies or for different size sized things. It can be towns, it can be companies, it can be bottles of pop. So to compare them, we have to compare by proportion. Okay? It's a bit like um, you shouldn't compare bar charts between two towns if they're different sizes, but you can compare their, percentage, their pie charts to say who's got more of this thing. So it could be who's got more doctors, who's got more teachers. And you can't compare by the number of people because two completely different sized towns, yeah, it's not fair to compare them. But if you turn it into a percentage, you're saying, what if each town was 100 people? That's what the percentage means. What if each of these was 100 people? And that's what we're going to do here. So we put into our large town, the start is 100%. I want to know, it went from, so the start amount was 10,000 people. And the end was 12,000 people, oh, not 22, 12,000 people. What do I want to know? Well, I want to know how it grows. And we want to know how it grows as a percentage. So the grow is about change. And because we've got this different size things, we need to compare by percentage. So we need to know what this change is in the middle as well. And the change is 2,000. OK. I can now write my equation. I'd start with x. Always begin with the x. x is in my percentage column. So I'm going to put the percentages there. So x, the partner percentage, I've got four numbers here linked. So the x over 100 is equal to people 2,000 divided by uh, 10,000. To be able to calculate this, I need to take the bottom number, which was divided by 100 on one side. As we go across the equals, we go opposite. And that gives me times 100 on the other side. Okay? Just insert some more space. Okay, so I'm going to put my calculation in. And now, you may look at this and go, I'm not really... All the actual mathematics I'm doing now hasn't changed from yesterday. We start with x... We do 2,000, divide by 10,000, multiply by 100. And this gives me the change. So I've got 2,000, divide by 10,000, and multiply by 100. And that gives me an answer, which is 20. If I look at where this is, the units are percentages. If I look at how we change from start to end, it goes up, so it's adding. So this is a plus 20%. The plus says increase by 20%. So the actual mechanism isn't that much different. If I now go to the village, and it grows from 2,500 to 3,000 people in the same time, let's see how that changes. I've got a start, 
change end. I've got my percentage and I've got people. I put into the top left hand corner, always 100%. What did I start with? Well, I started with 2,500. Oh, let's put in the red one. So this was my start amount from. What did I go to? 3,000, which is the end. Uh, I want to see, again, the growth. So, grow says I want to know this number. And because of the different size things, I want the percentage. What's the growth I've got? I've got to add 500 people. That's what's changed. So to say which town is bigger, let's work it out as a percentage. Start with the thing I don't know, the thing I want to know, and that's X. If I do it as a percentage, X, it's partner value that we have all four together. So we're only looking in the areas we've got four things together. Because this one's odd and we don't want to know about it, ignore it. So we've got X over 100. When I look at people, I can do the change was 500 and the start amount was 2,500. To write the calculation, we do X is the 500 divided by 2,500 and multiplied by the 100 on the other side. Same as we do with algebra, when you're doing division on one side, when it goes to the other side, it becomes multiplication. I do the calculation on my calculator, 500, divide by 2,500, multiplied by 100. And again, I get an answer, 20%. It's going up, so it's positive, so again, that's an increase. What's the conclusion we can make? What conclusion can I say about the growth of these two towns? So are they, is anyone, are they growing at the same rate? Is one faster, is one slower? If the percentages are the same, they're growing at the same rate. The populations are getting bigger by the same proportion each time. Okay, uh, I'm going to skip this cars one because it's we've done two examples of increases. I'd like to do a decrease one. And then if anybody would like me to do some more examples, I can do more examples afterwards. But I'd like some, a lot of people to have the chance to start working. So I'd just like to show you one decrease problem. And where is it? Where's it going? Is it on that sheet? Yeah, it is. Sheet, that one. Um, control copy, yeah, Z factor. So this is the number of people entering a, a competition. Okay, this year only six thousand two hundred people auditioned for Z factor, compared to 8,600 last year. What's the percentage as a number of the people that it has decreased since last year? So we do the same thing we do with each question. Tell the story as start, change and end. Begin with a percentage which is always 100. What we've got as the bottom part is auditions. 
rather than just listing people. Okay, these are additions. Uh, this year compared to last year. So which one of these two numbers is my starting amount? Is it the 8,600 or the 6,020? What's my starting amount? Jana Arsalan? Can you tell me which one is my starting number of auditions? Did I start, is the older time 6,020 or 8,600? The number of auditions we're looking at now, Sabia. We're looking at the number of additions. So is it that my older time, the 6,020 or my 8,600? Okay. Margarita, be careful about orders. Yeah. The older time, last year, that's my start. This year is the end. So I put in 8,600 and 6,020. They want to find this as a proportion. So they want to say what percentage, so we're looking in this top line, has the number decreased? As soon as you see decrease or increase, you know you're looking at change. So we're looking for the percentage change. And what we need to know is what's happened going from 8,600 to 6,020. So, sorry, we finished at 6,020. I started at 8,600. And I've lost 2,580 people. Do it as the percentage. We now build our equation the same way we did last lesson. Start with the x. Say the x is in the percentages. And we've got auditions. The bottom part of my percentage is going to be the partner. We've got 100. The auditions. What audition is uh, in the same column as the X? And that is 2,580. You don't have to take the minus if you know it's there. That's optional. Because we no already know that it's a minus one. But you do need to remember that. What's the partner to the 100? 8,600. Do the rearrangement. X is... 2,580 divided by 8,600, remembering this is negative, multiplied by 100. Take a division from one side, turns into a multiplication on the other. So I can take my, 8, 000, my 5, 000, 2,580, divide it by 8,600, and multiply by 100. And that gives me minus 30. What was the units on this x? x is a percentage. The minus tells us we have now decreased of 30%. Okay, guys. Um, I'm asking you only to do five from each sheet Check that you get the five right, and then you can move on to the second sheet as well. So the first one's on increase, second one is on decrease. I'm going to keep doing some video ones up here. So if you are working and you don't need them, go. you can put them away. I'm not going to be talking now. I'm going to do them as silent ones. So if somebody needs help, you can put it into the chat. Okay, or put, do a hand up if you need me to talk. But the rest of what I'm intending to do is do sort of three or four more questions similar to this that will 
show the process of how I fill them out. Okay? So off you go. Go and get started on your work.